afternoon, everybody. I am here to introduce two amazing beings this afternoon. Um, first, Angela Stokes Monarch. Uh, when Angela was 30 years old, she adopted a raw food lifestyle. It was May of 2002. And she's the award-winning author of an amazing 100 of an amazing 160 pounds conquering... This doesn't make sense. I'm going to make it up. Okay. <laughs> okay, so Angela, I know a lot about Angela anyway. She's lost 160 pounds on the raw food diet. She's authored a couple books now. She and Matt together have an amazing website called The Raw, the raw Food World, right? Mm -hmm. Where they do telecasts every day from all over the world showing you about the raw food diet. And um, she also did a 92-day uh, juice feast. And um, she has, you have a new juicing book coming out? I have one out, yeah. Great. She has a new juicing book. <laughs> and Matt has been 100% raw vegan for 10 years. And he embraced the raw food lifestyle after reading Norman Walker's classic book, Become Younger. And Matt didn't go raw to relieve health issues. Just being raw simply made sense to him. And after being raw for five years, Matt authored the book, Raw Spirit, to address the various physical challenges and spiritual shifts that going raw can involve. Matt conquers his sec co considers his second book, Raw Success, his Bible for the raw food lifestyle. He travels worldwide teaching about healthy eating and how to heal from degenerative disease. And I got the honor of being at Matt and Angela's wedding just recently. It was beautiful, amazing, best wedding ever. <laughs> and um, I'm really honored to introduce you two today. So Thank you. Welcome. Thank you, Elena. Right on. So yeah, is that that's a good level, right? Okay, cool. So we travel all around the world. I'm talking. We've been to Morocco, Spain, New Zealand, Australia, and she's been to even more places than that. Um, and we're always hearing, you know, it's I can't be raw because we travel and you know we go on the road and everything like that. I have never had an issue anywhere. I mean, fruits and vegetables grow on trees and stuff like that. Every, I mean, you're in Morocco. They have these like ponies walking around with like, you know, a whole entire selection of all sorts of um, amazing raw foods. It's everywhere. So um, I guess today what we're going to do is give you some tips on how you can do it on the road and kind of what we do on the road um, when we're traveling. So... Um, to, what we're going to start off with is an amazing chia meal. I mean, chia seeds are awesome. It's very, they're very easy to use. You can bring them wherever you want. Um, how many people are not familiar with chia seeds? Wow. Okay. These are chia seeds. Has, you know when you soak flax up, they get gelatinous in a sense? Thank you. These do the same thing, but at a quicker rate, within five minutes, they hold up to nine times its weight in water. And when I first had these as a raw foodist, I probably didn't have it until I was raw for seven years. And when I first experienced chia seeds, I was like, whoa, this is like a new food that's completely different from everything else out there. And it was profound. I, I was eating it nonstop for a few days. It was awesome. And um, Angela, if you can give them maybe some history of the chia seeds, that'd be great. Yeah, chia seeds have only kind of come out onto the raw food market in the last few years, but they're a really, really ancient food. If you look at them, they actually kind of look like tiny dinosaur eggs. They're really cute, like tiny little black and white dinosaur eggs. And um, the Aztec and Mayan messenger people, this is what they used to use, apparently, as their fuel when they were like running around carrying messages from one place to the other. They had a little pouch of this with them because it gives you this amazing energy boost, chia seed. And it's, um, it's so easy to use. That's one of the main reasons why we love it on the road because you literally, you know, this stuff will absorb 10 times its volume in liquid in like 10 minutes. So for kids as well, it's a really great and easy thing. And it will absorb any liquid. It doesn't matter what it is, water, juice, nut milk or seed milk that's really yummy you can like blend down a load of fruit into like a pulp and tip this into that and it will absorb it all absolutely anything salad dressings and the taste of it's pretty neutral so you can make it like a savory meal or a sweet meal it doesn't matter 
and we've actually made apple juice and used that to put in there. And what it does is it also slows the absorption of sugars into your bloodstream. So that's an awesome aspect of it too. You can handle a little bit more fruit with that sort of thing. Yeah, it's They actually say it hydrates you more when you do this. Yeah, you got to make sure that the chia seed is well hydrated itself. Um, so some people actually use this to help control acid reflux because it literally will absorb any liquid it comes into contact with. So one woman that we know, she takes a tablespoon of this stuff dry into her body every day. She just takes a tablespoon. It goes into her stomach and absorbs all the acid. And then, like maybe five minutes later, she drinks a load of water because if you don't, make sure that this stuff's fully hydrated, it will pull from your tissues. So you've got to make sure it's like really well hydrated. Um, and if it is hydrated, it will hydrate you. Yeah, it keeps you hydrated. Yeah. And if you're going to do that acid refluxing, why does the person have acid reflux in the, in the first place? I mean, this is a great remedy to heal that, but there's other things that you might want to do to heal your health to avoid acid reflux. And it's, yeah, it's great for diabetics, and it's also called the dieter's dream food because it helps, to, it helps you to feel full and satiated. Um, and it has an incredible nutritional profile. So there's many reasons why we love chia. And we're going to show you a quick and easy little um, way of making a chia pudding right now. And I want to tell you guys, we've never done a food demo before. <laughs> So this is really kind of funny for us. Uh, I was just in there for the last hour getting all the samples ready. And God bless the people who work here. That's all I can say. They, they were a great help. So another thing to let you know is that we don't really use measurements. So I'm sorry if anyone's here um, with their left brain and wanting to know measurements because we don't really use measurements. So you're going to have to just play along with us with this one. Um, so I'm going to make it for about, I'm going to make this for one person. And that's probably about a cup of chia seeds. And I'm going to throw in, I'm going to start with like two cups of water and we'll see how it goes. This is the way we live. This is how we live on the road. You know, we just, we work with what we've got, where we are. And so we're not very precise with things. I always say, you know, I don't see owls flying around with measuring cups. You know, I... That's just, I like to bring things back to simplicity and to nature, and nobody else measures their food, so. You know what I've done a couple times with this? Um, I've seriously just done this. It's going to gel up really quickly. It's quite amazing. And I've seriously just, I'm a raw foodist for 11 years, so keep that in mind. I would, I've seriously just put in salt in there, like Himalayan salt, mm. with green food. And that's what I ate. Like a green powder, a dried green powder. Green powder. Might sound a little bit nuts, but yeah. <laughs> Um, we have yakon syrup. See, also chia absorbs so much that it almost like if you put like sugar, like any type of sweetener in there, it's not going to taste that sweet still. Because why is that? Well, it displaces everything. So it, that's also why it's supposed to be really great for diabetics. Is because it slows down the absorption of any sugars that it's with. So that's why when we put it like with apple juice. If we just drank apple juice, we'd be like bouncing off the walls, you know, because it's so much sugar. But if you put a bit of chia in there, it slows down the absorption of the sugars. And that's one reason why I like to put whole fruit pieces in there, so you can like taste the sugar more, along with like sweetening it. All right, so that seems like it's gelling to a nice kind of consistency. And so I'm going to put some sweeteners in. And I tend towards low glycemic sweeteners. Um, the kind of things I love are stevia, um, mesquite powder, lacuma powder, um, what else do we have, carob powder. We don't get so excited about the really high glycemic things like agave and honey and things like that. Um, so today I will be using yakon syrup and stevia. So we have like a liquid stevia extract here. I really like the green powder stevia as well, like the whole leaf green powder stevia. And again, that's great for diabetics. I'm not diabetic. I just tend towards the really low glycemic stuff because I don't handle sugars so well. So, I mean, you could even use coconut water as oh, the... Oh, yeah. yeah. 
And again, coconuts are a great thing oh. to rely on when you're traveling. If you're anywhere where there's coconuts, fresh coconuts, go for it. You know, be drinking coconut water every day. It's such a wonderful resource for electrolytes and, you know, just such healthy, clean water. Often when you're in countries where coconuts are growing, the actual water you can get hold of isn't necessarily so great. So get coconuts instead, yeah? Okay, so the Thai coconuts that we can get here in the US, are they irradiated? What's going on with them? We hear so many different things about the coconuts, you know, that they're dipped in... Formaldehyde? I never heard the radiation thing, I've heard the formaldehyde thing. But, yeah, that's what it is. If you open up the coconut, just chop it open, and you look, you can see, like, the color, discoloration from it, and it doesn't make it all the way through to the water, or the meat, actually. I mean, it's still of some concern. It's not like going to Florida and getting a coconut right off of the tree. Yeah, Matt Amsden from Revolution, and if you guys know him, the chef, but he actually had a Thai coconut sent to a lab and tested. And he has like an article about this on his website somewhere. Um, and it came back with no traces of formaldehyde inside the coconut. The inside of a coconut is actually sterile. You can use that as a blood transfusion, and it is used in countries. Look at that. Sorry. <laughs> it's like, right, that's what it does, right? Like in five minutes. Yeah, you know, if you're used to coming to these demos and seeing like really fancy cakes and stuff, that's not the kind of thing we're going to be preparing. And professional for. people are not like <laughs> flicking food around and like... This is raw food, real world, on the road. Um, The taste is really neutral, so you can really do anything with it. We tend to use it with sweet stuff because it helps with the sugars. Yeah. So it's just kind of like it's kind of like a bargain, you know. It's like you get to eat sweet stuff and, and you don't get so many so people much. like make cereals out of this. It's like cream of wheat or porridge pudding. It's amazing. You can put like granola in here, all sorts of fun things. They've actually we there's products out there that are like chia cereals. So yeah. you, they create this whole entire concoction of like this, this bag of stuff. You put it into a bowl and you just add water or nut milk and then you have your cereal. All right, so I put a few drops of the liquid stevia in and I'm going to put in some yakon syrup now. I love yakon syrup because, again, it's like a low glycemic sweetener. Actually, this stuff's pretty amazing. It's said to be no glycemic. The sugars that are in this are a certain kind of sugar that we can't actually absorb. So you get the sweet taste but you, you don't get any kind of spike. And you can get yakon in lots of different forms. You can get it as a liquid, you can get it in slices, you can get it as a powder. Um, and it's from a root vegetable from South America. Um, and it, I mean, look at this stuff. It's like molasses or honey or something. It's so sweet, but you don't get any sugar spike from it. So again, that's an another bargain, right? Wow, I get to eat sweet stuff and it's... All right, I'm probably putting in a tablespoon, let's say, or I don't know. <laughs> I'm putting some in. <laughs> no, we don't store yakin in the fridge. What, what some people do with chia is they'll like take this entire thing, well, maybe like half of this, fill up this entire bowl, and just fill this whole bowl up with hydrated chia, put it in the refrigerator, and then just take spoonfuls a few times a day. It also helps the bowels. It just goes right through you, yeah. like crazy, like nothing else. It's why a lot of people use it. It's pro this is probably the most popular product on our website out of everything else. Yeah, Oprah. Nothing sells more than this. Oprah spoke about Chia uh, probably about this time last year. It went insane off the hook. Yeah. Actually, Chia suppliers ran out of Chia, like worldwide. Yeah, there was a Chia drop for a little bit. There was a Chia drop. And if you're interested in any, we have some downstairs at home. <laughs> All right, and I'm going to throw in some raisins. This is just, you know, you could put any kind of dried fruit in here. This is just what they had back there. So this is um, half a cup of raisins. I know that because the lovely assistant helped me to do half a cup. And... Raspberries. Raspberries, yes. I try to was... speak English every once in a while. <laughs> English accent, oh. I'm going to put in some cinnamon as well. I'd say about half a teaspoon 
of cinnamon, or, or not, a teaspoon. I'm glad some people here know what's going on. So yes, that was a teaspoon, apparently, of cinnamon. And that's actually it. So you don't, I mean, there was no equipment involved, right? There was a bowl and a spoon and a microphone. You don't need the microphone. Um, and then we're going to put some berries on top. When you get your little samples coming out, hopefully there's going to be enough. There's a little berry on top of each of yours. There was four raspberries left, so four raspberries. You can use more or any fresh fruit. You know, bananas go really nice with this or chopped apples. You know, the, the possibilities are literally endless. I really like chia with nut or seed milk. We didn't have any maids today, so um, we used water instead. But there we go. And you'll get to try some of that in a little while when they bring the samples out. So <laughs> this is the, what the consistency looks like. <laughs> it's really yummy. OK, so that was the chia recipe. <laughs> My turn? Your turn. OK. I've lived off this meal for many years, actually. Um, haven't been doing it lately, though. This is an apple flax meal. Yeah. OK, so is anybody familiar with Dr. Norman Walker? Yeah. A few people? Yeah. Um, if you read his book, I think it was Become Younger, he would always, every single day he would make this meal where he would mush up a couple bananas, put some dried fruit in there, maybe some like carrot, like from the, his juicer, like the pulp stuff. But what he said was he actually ate the same breakfast for like 12 years. Wow. It's crazy. And I, I tend to do the same thing. I eat the same things every single day. It's quite interesting. You know, I change up the fruits and the vegetables, you know, to get different nutrients and stuff like that. But I first heard about, I, this first came to me um, when I was, I think it was, I was reading Paul Neeson's book and he was interviewing Gabriel Cousins and he asked him what he eats every single day. And what he said from in the morning, he would blend apples with flax and bee pollen. I was like, okay, I'll try that out. And the mix, the, when you, these two together taste amazing. And um, I was addicted to it for many years. I should probably get back into eating that. So this is what you do. You take a food processor that we don't know how to open. Oh, this way. We need an assistant. <laughs> Two hands. Ah. Ah, got it. Okay. Oh. Sweet. All right. So I'm just taking the middle bit out of the apples and just cutting them down roughly because they're going in the food processor. It doesn't matter what they look like. You don't need good knife skills. I use the whole apple. I don't care. Oh yeah. I like, like the, the cyanide. cyanide. <laughs> I'm just lazy, actually. Okay. So that was three apples. Is that right for one person? <laughs> he just put the cyanide in. Okay. Oh, right on. Okay, so I like to do this first. Oh, man. But how, how am I going to get this stuff out? Oh, then the leg can come off. Oh. Okay. Got it. Interesting. <laughs> okay, so right now it's like into these small pieces. I don't like to turn it into a complete liquid, even though you can do that, and that's, uh, it's, it's good either way. But here, I'll show you. I got to get to that's that point. Oh, uh, that's okay. So she took it into a complete liquid, which is cool. You can do this meal with bananas as well, and that's even easier on the road because you just mush the bananas with a fork. So okay. You again, don't need any equipment. Two-step process. Okay, so now I kind of like it. It's it's like half liquid, half big pieces, and you could do it either way. But the reason why I like the bigger pieces is because it keeps the flax from like totally absorbing. If that makes sense, actually. I forgot. 
Okay, another thing that I like to do, before I wasn't using tahini, um, this is tahini. Has anybody ever like mixed any type of sweetness with tahina, tahini? It almost turns it into like a halva taste. And just the, two, I mean, tahini by itself is pretty bitter, but when you add sweetness to it, it's just, I mean, I became addicted to that for a while actually. And so you could throw tahini in there if you like. I think that's about two and a half tablespoons. Now, keep in mind, this is pretty heavy. You don't need to use the tahini. We're, we're getting like heavy, dense meal. This is like a way for a raw foodist to not overeat, to having a small meal that just tastes really sweet and fatty with the dried fruit and everything. And you're, that will probably satisfy you to where you're not going to like take some figs and eat them like till you're blue in the face. And also, the combination of fruit and fat is really like classically a great food combination but it's something that we find really easy on the road and it, it's also really good for building muscle yeah and in small quantities like this you can handle the combination I feel fruit and fat go together well um, as long as you're not overeating I mean you might have a little more flatulence and if you didn't do that but cooked food is where you really got to be concerned about food point look at that oh my god isn't that beautiful? <laughs> okay, so we put that in there. Wow, that's amazing. It almost looks like cottage cheese, doesn't it? It does. Okay, so I, when I was first playing with this, I would like kind of blend the flax into it. But I realized using it as a topping and eating it kind of like that, especially when there's tahini in it, like it already has the fat, I don't know what it is, but like when you eat it like this, it's amazing. But we have so much flax here, we can kind of like blend this up, like mix this in. And what the flax will do is we'll make it thicker, kind of like the chia does, because off of the apple juice in here. So what I like to do is put a lot in. Is there bee pollen in There's no bee pollen in it. But you could put some in. Like on top if you want. And then what I do is I, I got enough of it stirred in, and then I'll just put add some to like add on top. And then I just won't mix it in completely, just so it's like kind of like that. As a topping, it's amazing. <laughs> and what we have here is dried fruit. We have raisins. I usually use like mulberries or something like that. Just throw that in there. And then you mix it up. I usually use the purple mulberries, which are just ridiculous in this meal. It tastes like cookie dough, right? Yeah. In a meal like this, it tastes like cookie dough. In my opinion. Keep in mind, I've been a raw foodist for 11 years. <laughs> and you can also put green powders in this meal. Check it out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you definitely want to take notes. Um, so with this... Um, other variations, you could just change the fruit, you could change the nut butter. Um, you don't even need to use nut butter. Um, I've done it, I used to do it for years without nut butter with just lots of flax, and then I would top the flax on top of it also. It's, it's really good, but the tahini just makes it like that halva taste. Um, and green powders, right? You could put green powders. Yeah, in. I put spirulina in there before. Oh, like, yeah. just made it totally green. Spirulina is pretty awesome. Yeah. Tahini is a nut butter. Seed butter. Seed butter. But you can yeah. use almond butter or whatever. Um, and I, if you put a little bit of salt as well, that's really nice. Okay. Yeah. They were ground. You they ground, were ground them up. Already. Yeah. yeah. Um, I want to tell them about the greener grasses coconut and I want to tell them about the figs. Do it. How, do we, how are we doing on time? Oh, we got a lot of time. Yeah. All right. I don't know. I feel like just passing this around. We have samples. We have oh, okay. professional sample plates, like real people. We can okay. actually ask for those to be brought out now, right? I don't know. You guys want it now or you want to wait? Okay. Right. Okay, well, that's coming out. Sure. Bee pollen? She's the expert with bee pollen. Hey. It's all the vitamins, minerals, and it comes from can the bees. It's great. We samples now. Okay. Pretend this is coconut water. Okay, so I'm, we're just gonna tell you what we do on the road now. I mean, this is 
of traveling on the road, right? Yeah. Okay. Oh, wow. Um, so we could do goji juice, we could do the greener grasses and coconut water, and I could, um, and the romaine wraps, we could tell them. Yeah. Okay, and we'll switch off. Okay, we'll do the figs last. Okay, so I'll start, I'll do the first one, then Angela will do the next one. Yeah, please, come on. Wow, this is a trip. Everyone's eating the meals we eat. <laughs> yeah, so this is what, like, 100% raw food is to eat on the road. And I really hope that your taste buds agree with it. And if they don't, then it's only like one ounce. So <laughs> it's not going to be too, <laughs> too much to handle. All right. So what are you going to tell them about first? Okay. Um, okay, so I'm going to tell you guys, like, the super main staple when we're on the road. Romaine wraps. This is key if you're gonna be traveling. And to be honest with you, I sometimes eat this when I'm not traveling. Okay, so what you do when you're traveling, there's nowhere to go, you're traveling around the United States. Um, I don't know, I feel like waiting, so food's up. Oh, that's okay. Okay, cool. Okay, so the ingredients that we use is like a head of romaine lettuce, always organic, tomatoes. We usually always have a pound bag of dulse on us, which is a salty seaweed. Avocado. Am I missing anything? Sprouts. Sprouts. Yes. We thoroughly encourage eating seaweeds and sprouts every day, if possible. Seaweeds to get all the minerals and sprouts because it's such an easy way of getting vibrant greens into your body, um, especially if you're growing them yourself. Then, you know, you've, you've got wonderful, fresh greens year round in your kitchen. Yeah. So, a lot of people are like, okay, you're on the road, how do you get all these ingredients? Seriously, there's whole foods in almost every state now. And, I mean, we never have a problem with it. And when there's an emergency and we don't have a Whole Foods, I mean, I'm kind of bashful into saying this, but you know, we don't like supporting them, but you know, if emergency comes to emergency, we go to Walmart. They have organic food these days. You know how they have those romaine heads, like the organic ones and three, three the hearts, you know what I'm talking about? They have the avocados, they have everything you need. We try not to go there, but we have to do it sometimes. So what we do is we take the head of romaine lettuce, right? We rip off a leaf, so we got a leaf of romaine here. We take an avocado, we scoop out a little bit of it onto the leaf. We take like probably um, the cherry tomatoes, cut those up and put it on there. Take dulse, the seaweed, make it salty flavor, put that on top of there. And if sometimes we'll even use nut butters or something, put that on there, then you just wrap it up and then you eat it. It's like a salad. In a wrap. And you don't need a bowl or anything. Yeah. Yeah, so that's one thing. Yeah, we really encourage traveling with seaweed. Travel with dry stuff, like the chia and seaweed and green powders, and get fresh stuff wherever you go. And travel with a cooler, a cooler box if you can. That's what we do. Yeah. In Whole Foods, places yeah. like that, usually you can find raw nut or seed butters. Um, uh, <laughs> you might be able to find some tahini in Morocco, but we, yeah, we usually travel with those things as well. Yeah. Wow. Goji berries um, and different dried fruits. What else do we bring? We bring nuts and seeds. I really like having Brazil nuts, like one or two here and there just to make sure that I'm getting enough selenium. Um, what else do we bring? Bee pollen and hemp bee seeds. Bee pollen, yeah. And she wants to know about bee pollen. I kind of just blew it off. Oh. Bee pollen and hemp seeds together. She, we just like throw yeah. bee pollens and hemp seeds in a jar and that's like her trail mix. She just eats that straight. Yeah, that is such a wonderful combination if you've never tried it. Just like in a little jar or box or bag or whatever. Mix together bee pollen and hemp seed and it's it's an incredible mixture. You've got all the essential fatty acids in there, 
bee pollen is actually a complete food. Like if you lived on nothing but bee pollen, you'd be pretty healthy. It's got the full range of amino acids in there. It's like a complete protein. It tastes really good if you get the right kind. You know, bee pollens all taste different. It depends what the bees have been picking up. So they can really, really vary in taste. The one that we have, I really love. I've tasted bee pollens that taste absolutely disgusting as well. You know, so you've got to find a good, um, a good selection. And what else do we travel with? That's probably about it, right? Green powders. Green powders. Yeah. The one that we sell, I really like. It comes from Spain, and it's like a multi-floral one. Like you can see, there's lots of different colors in there. So the bees have been picking stuff up from lots of different places. There's like purple and orange and yellow, and it's a real range of things. Um, it's, if you live in one place, it's usually a good idea to get local bee pollen if you can, preferably from a, a beekeeper who you feel really good about, because there can be some ethical concerns about beekeeping. Um, and if you can get local pollen, then that's really great for handling things like hay fever and allergies, because you're getting like the local, all the local pollen, all the local flora going into your system in like homeopathic doses. Yeah. Okay, so the question is, do you avoid any nuts? Um, do you, I personally do avoid cashews and peanuts most of the time. They're legumes, they're not really nuts. It's kind of like a bad food combination in itself. It's a starch and a protein in one. It's a legume. I mean, I wouldn't go crazy if you're trying to become a raw foodist and you're eliminating all these damaging foods and you eat peanuts and cashews. I mean, that's just like advanced later on, you know what I mean? It's also often pretty tricky to get genuinely raw peanuts or cashews. That's also a tricky thing with them. A lot of cash, um, peanuts out there are covered in this toxin called aflatoxin and it's rare to find like genuinely raw peanuts and then cashews the same deal you know that I don't know if you've any of you have ever met like a real cashew like straight from the tree but that's that thing's like really hard you know that's like hard work to get those things out of there but the cashews that we have actually sprout so they're yeah. really raw, which was really cool to see. We were, we were playing with them. All right, I want to do another recipe real quick. This is going to take two seconds. We got 10 minutes. OK. Coconut water. And how many people here know Health Forces Company? Vitamin Mineral Green, that yeah. company. Yeah, there's this one product they have, greener grasses. I think we have like 12 bottles left. Greener grasses. It's only three ingredients. And I was talking to James Sheridan like when he first came out with the, the, when he came out with the newer version. There's something about the greener grasses that make it just taste ridiculously good. And when you take coconut water, seriously, you could just take one of these jars, go downstairs, buy a coconut water, fill this up as high as you want, and then take a lot of greener grasses and then just shake it up. And the mixture of that together, first off, it's, you're going to get, it's like a green juice. It's like young coconut water. They have them right downstairs. And um, it tastes like chocolate. Yeah. It's amazing. Chocolate milk. We just drink it all like, oh my God. I can just drink it and drink it and just not stop. And it's like, you know, the greens usually don't taste good, but this is just this combination. It's almost like, it's almost like malty in a sense, the greener grasses, yeah. the consistency. And if you blend it, when you're on the road, you usually don't have a blender. You can just do that and it'll be amazing. But if you blend it, it turns into this like thick, milkshakey, frothy thing. Yeah, that's one of our favorite recipes. Two ingredients, coconut water and greener grasses. Yeah, you got to try it. And it's actually like a blood transfusion. Um, Anne Wigmore, way back, said, you know, if, when you have greens and coconut water together, it's like having a blood transfusion. And you just, it feels good. And fresh is always best. You know, if you can get fresh green juice or you can make a green smoothie and you're getting your greens into you that way, then all the better. But if you're living on the road and you can't get fresh stuff, then green powders are the way to go. You know, so coconut water and green grasses together is something that we love. You are so beautiful. It is crazy. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Health Force Nutritionals. Yes. Jamie Sheridan's coming. 
he puts a lot in. I would probably put like about a tablespoon per person, but he would probably do more like three tablespoons or something. And what we're going to do is we have like 15 bottles of greener grasses or 27. We're going to sell them for 22 Ooh. special from this show. Come, at, come down afterwards if you want to get it. Okay, what else? Goji juice. Should we tell them that? Absolutely. All right. Goji juice rocks. You want to do it? Go for it. We've been drinking goji juice every day for about the last month, and we make it ourselves on the road. Again, this is a way of getting like great nutrients into our body on the road when we can't get fresh juices. So we... They say, they say goji berries are like a longevity. There's something in there that like a lot of people in Chinese medicine use this stuff for longevity. Yeah, it's the number one uh, herb in Chinese medicine. And there's a wonderful story about a guy who lived apparently to be 252. And he ate gojis every single day. That was pretty much what he lived on. So what we do, let's imagine we're using this. We put gojis in here and we soak them in water um, for at least three hours. So let's say for the two of us, we'd use like half a pound of goji berries. Yeah, the more goji berries you use, the more syrupy it tastes. And it, as soon as you put goji berries in it, it starts to turn red. What water does is it, it like absorbs everything in it. That's why you don't want it in plastic bottles, but it absorbs everything. And yeah, we just strain the gojis out, right? Yeah, so then we, when, it, when the gojis are all puffed up and hydrated and this is all red and yummy looking, we just tip it out into a nut milk bag and just squeeze it, squeeze it, squeeze it. All the seeds pop out of the goji berries and you'll see how incredibly fertile they are. You can just go, like all the stuff that's left in the bag, all the pulp, you can go and plant that in your garden and if the Davers are with you, you might end up with some goji berry trees because goji berries have so many seeds inside them. Yeah. Um, and then we, so we have all this red liquid over here from squeezing and then we throw marine phytoplankton in there. Yeah, and that's like a green juice also, the marine phytoplankton. And what we, I, I like to be, I like to drink a lot. I don't know about you guys, but I'm like, and you know, I don't like drinking water all the time. Like when I have goji juice, it's pretty low glycemic, it has sugars in there, but I mean, I could just drink a mass. So what we do, I'll fill up this entire bowl with like liquid and like almost like three fourths of a bag of, like three fourths of a pound of goji berries and let it sit overnight. And then I strain it. I have this entire huge bowl of this dense liquid that tastes amazing. We put marine phytoplankton in it. And I'll like, I'll, the, 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 yeah, just like nonstop. He's a total hydrophile. He just, that's okay. Human growth hormones are in it, right? What was the question? What is the major nutrient that the goji berries? Goji berries are great for protein and for B vitamins, especially. And yeah, they, they're apparently one of the only foods, there's very, very few foods um, that promote human growth hormone in humans. So that's like the whole longevity link is that um, they're kind of. You know, when we become adults, we don't really have so much human growth hormone going on anymore. But when you eat goji, somehow it stimulates that in humans. And so it kind of like slows or reverses the aging process. Right. So, I mean, goji berries, good quality ones, it's like $20 for a pound. And, you know, we go through a lot of that. So um, another special that we'll offer downstairs, they're normally $20 a pound. I'm going to sell them for $12 a pound. Mm. And then you can get as many as you want. We probably have about 20 pounds or so. I don't even know. And then you can just start doing this. And then we put marine phytoplankton in. Those are $60 a bottle. We'll do a special of $40 a bottle. Wow. Just for after the show. When I, you're looking for goji berries, I like to look for ones that are a little bit soft. Um, You want to get organic ones, preferably if you can, or wild crafted. You, I mean, you can get goji berries in Asian stores often, and they're like, they might just kind of be really, really hard, and yeah, you, be you don't really know where they're coming from. They yeah. might have strange colorants on the outside of them, and yeah, yeah I, would, I would get them from like a raw food source that you feel good about, if you can. Okay, so how much time? We got five minutes, right? Okay, we got one more food demo for everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so um, when we're traveling on the road, you know, we just want something simple and quick. And um, so I just asked her to get figs for me at the last second. 
and this is my lunch, so yeah, you just <laughs> you just, eat you just eat them. You know, you just go to the Whole Foods and that's great. What three pound you... of figs. <laughs> no. How were those samples for you guys? Is that something? Wow. All right. You could also dip this in tahini if you're not going to overeat them. That's another thing that we might do. That's kind of fun. Or in almond butter. This summer, we've been eating um, blueberries with almond butter a lot, which again is like classically not really thought of as an ideal food combination, but it tastes really great and we've been loving it. And you can actually see everything that I eat every single day on my blog, if you're not familiar with that. Um, so you can go to rawreform dot blogspot dot com that's my blog and I put everything that I eat every day on there and we put all kinds of other stuff on there as well we do a daily TV show um, online like a raw food TV show the raw food world dot TV yeah my blog is raw reform dot blogspot dot com my main website is raw reform and you can get to it from there as well yeah and our TV show is the raw food world dot TV our store is the same thing, but .com. The rawfoodworld.com. We got tons of websites. They're all linked to each other. <laughs> yeah. Yeah? Sprouting on the road. We sprout in nut milk bags. So, you know, just the same kind of thing. You might strain your juice or nut milk through or whatever. We sprout in that. And so, you know, we soak the seeds in something like this overnight and just tip them out into the nut milk bag and make sure that they always stay damp in the nut milk bag. You just don't want them to ever dry out. And we, you know, you can hang that up in the back of a car or in a shower, in a hotel room or whatever. That's what we do when we're on the road. Did you guys like the apple meal too? Which one did you prefer? Put your hand up if you preferred the apple. <laughs> it's a riot. Wait, how many people like the apple meal? All right. Who preferred the chia? Who thought it was all disgusting? <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're actually, we have the intention to probably at some point make a book called You Eat That? <laughs> and no, it's called You Eat That? Or You Eat That? I don't know where the intonation goes. But it's going to be full of recipes like this, like things that raw foodists actually genuinely eat. I think I'm going to keep this. All right. And this. There was one last question in the back? No? One minute. Is there any last question in one minute? Yes. The chia was chia, water, yakon syrup, stevia, cinnamon, and berries. You might want to add salt to that too. That might yeah, be fun. Yeah, that would make it nice. All right. I guess that's it. So thank you all so much. <laughs> We did it. We did it, somehow. <laughs>